for all you contractors out there living with low energy, living soft as baby shit, this episode's to help you win the war with yourself. This guy's helped me level up in business. He's been to the penitentiary, but he's done crazy things. Millions of followers, YouTube, Instagram, making $30 million a year, three Rolls Royces, Lamborghinis, and no one thought this guy would be successful. If you got excuses, if you're out here fucking living on a, a, on a low vibe, you need to pay attention to this because my man Wes Watson is here to help you be ripped, rich, and rare. What's being ripped, rich, and rare mean, Wes? It's the fucking level up. It's what it takes to be a man that you admire. I tell everyone, are you the individual you would listen to? Why the fuck are you talking then? The whole point is all of us want to guide our families. We want to be the proper leaders in our businesses. But are we leading ourselves correctly? Why the fuck did we forget that? That if we're not the individual we admire, that nobody should listen to and admire us. And if we don't follow our own fucking voice inside, why the fuck should they follow us when we open our fucking mouths? Why? They shouldn't. So the whole point behind everything I do is I'm watching everybody out here search and search and search. And they're thinking, how? Even you said right there, how's he doing it? How's he doing it? How's he doing it? And I always say, it's who, motherfucker? It's not how. It's always going to be the individual you create, the individual you truly admire, and giving that person unbiasedly to the world. And that's where everyone's fucking up. They're thinking, how am I going to build my business? In today's society, the age of fucking, obviously, the age of attention, it's who. Who can get the attention and then obviously provide the service and the product? But I just based myself off of only validating me through what I've always needed, the man I always needed in my fucking life. And then once I started doing business, it became clear. Am I the client I needed? Am I the man I always needed? And that's where everyone fucks up. They they'll, they'll won't even realize that they slow drag on a deal and then they get pissed when people slow drag them on deals. They don't realize that they're not the man they would look up to, but they want you to listen to them. They don't fucking realize that they don't even listen to their motherfucking selves and they want you to follow their direction. You want them to follow your direction. They're not even listening to themselves. And they're like, why are my, why are my employees not listening? Motherfucker, you don't listen to you. And you weren't always this clear, had your shit together, motherfucker, man. What, what was the rock bottom for you? Oh, the penitentiary. The penitentiary will expose you. Adversity reveals a man to himself. And when I really had to sit down, there was no escape. There was no fucking women, bro. I, I didn't even see a woman for 10 I didn't even see a fucking woman for 10 years. I mean, anytime you would want to escape any type of pain, you didn't have any of the distractions that you guys have out here. People get too comfortable. We don't get to get comfortable in the penitentiary. You're faced with all your fucking issues. And I mean, obviously people use dope. They drink. They do drugs. So that's their escape. But they don't have the multitude of things that you guys have out here. From overeating to like, like you've seen that fucking stupid quote. Give a man fucking sex, good food and, and a fucking TV or some stupid shit like that. And his dreams die. But, I mean, that's what you don't have in prison. You're, you're forced to face reality all day. You'll never really get what you want. And so you have to create the individual that validates himself off weathering what would kill most. When in prison, you're, uh, you're either an asset or a liability. And you're either going to have to put in work for your people or you're going to have to be around for the riot when it kicks off. Who do you want around? The six-foot, 245-pound dude who trains every day? Or the 150-pound dope fiend who's a problem. So the dope fiend, he's going to have to, he's the first up to bat. He's going to have to put in work. Say another guy from our race, white guys are, the white guys have to be in a gang. If Lee rolls the fuck in, he's part of the wood pile. He's in the gang. And you're in a white gang the second you roll in. One side of the day room is the whites, the Southsiders, the Paisanos, the Paisas. The Paisanos and the, pa the Paisas, they're the Mexicans from Mexico. The Southsiders are like the San Diego, L.A., fucking all the gangs from Southern California, all the, the essays, you know, the homies. They're all the gang members, the American Mexicans from the gangs. And then there's the white boys. That's one side of the day room. The other side of the day room is the blacks, the others, which are Samoans and Asians, and then the northerners. So the day room is split like that. It's gangland. Everybody rolls with their own people. 
but we're split between the day range. So we have an allegiance with the Southsiders and the Pisces, and the Blacks, the others, and the Northerners, they all have an allegiance. Like, if it cracks off, then we have to go half versus half. Both sides are erupting towards each other. But usually there's, you know, there's smaller discrepancies between, say, different, you know, the Blacks and the Southerners or whatever. But if the Southerners jump, we have to jump with them. Teach you about collaborating in business. Oh, it's just, <laughs> I mean, it's just, in prison in general, it just taught me to minimize liabilities. Mm -hmm. So I have to look out for Lee and the other white dudes. So if you see them start to slip, this is where my coaching business started. Okay. For me to get out of prison, I had to strengthen the men on my team, in my gang. And I had to make sure they were good. So I had to get them off devices. I had to get them working out. I had to get them eating better, which I did so that we could all get out of prison. That's what turned into my original program on the street. Because I have a program that's been around since I got out of prison that's $2.99 a month, $7.50 for three, twelve ninety nine for six, two thousand for a year, where I just get you right. We get you off your alcohol, your drugs, we get your mind right, we get you working out, we get your diet right. The same thing I did for those guys in the penitentiary to get out of prison. I'm getting you out of your way on the street the same way I got myself out of my way and my guys out of the way in prison. So minimizing the liability, which you are to yourself, to your family, to your business, to everything Lee wants. Once we get you right, now your who can be successful. Most people are thinking how, but they're still drinking. They're not operating from a high frequency mindset because they don't work out. They eat like shit. They're not aligned with their conscience diet wise and what their, their body's telling them. So they're fully off. They're at a low frequency. Most of the time, they're probably shitting on themselves with negative self-talk to where they'll never be the person who can have a bunch of eights and nines working for them. Dude, I talk to these guys all the time, and it's like sometimes I'm talking to fucking Eeyore. I mean, there's no big results that come from low energy sorts, but how can a guy that's in the rut like that start to level up and have the energy? You know, people will tell me on content all the time, are you on cocaine? Are you on crack? No, motherfucker, this is me. You know, and they just really say the same thing. Yeah, the whole thing, I call it conscience congruency. So when they're congruent with their conscience and they just step in the mirror and that dumb motherfucker who's drinking all weekend, he looks forward to going to the river. He's a contractor. He likes drinking beers with his buddies. He knows that something bad's on the horizon if he keeps drinking and driving his boat or driving his car and getting himself in trouble. He knows something bad is on the horizon. He doesn't have to fucking listen to me or leave. He has to listen to his fucking conscience and realize that that's the guidance system. Something bad is going to happen if he doesn't quit. That's what I tell people to listen. You don't have to fucking listen to me. But what's your heart telling you? And they say your conscience is the authentic voice of God. If that's the path you're going to walk, you're being hooked up from inside. And like in my chest, I, every time I would fuck up, I always tell people regret's your guideline. In my chest, every time I fucked up, I knew what I was doing was wrong. And I mean, that's just the simplicity of it. Self-mastery is going to take self-honesty. A lot of these motherfuckers aren't honest out here. I could be like, take off your shirt. Are you attracted to you, motherfucker? And the guy's got a big old belly, some tits. He's all hairy. He's pale. Oh, what? Wes, what the fuck? It's like, well, fuck. You want your wife to be attracted to you, right? Well, you're not attracted to you, motherfucker. She's not going to be. Is that the life you want? You want to compromise your people's integrity and make them fucking lie to you? You want your fucking wife to lie to you. Why don't you just do the work so she don't have to? So she ain't on Wes Watson's page going, damn, I wish my dude rolled a fucking Rolls Royce and was Jack tan as fuck killing it. There's, nobody thinks one thing looks better than the other. She may tell you it does because of her insecurities, but when the fuck is everyone just going to be honest? Dude, I'm going to be honest with you. Like Everyone spends so much time on social media. It's 2023. They know that they need to build a personal brand. So many guys are looking at what I've done over the last seven years and thinking, man, I, sh I wish I'd have fucking got started, but they're still sitting on the sidelines. You know, I talk about winning the fight for your American dream, but it's a fight to get your story told, story heard. Now, what's your message to somebody that wants to go from, you know, kind of overthinking this, telling their story to having the confidence and getting it out there? Like, like how do you go from being a guy that is nowhere with a personal brand to getting started? You just got to hire someone. Because, I mean, why, why spend the time sitting there trying to figure it out? And ultimately, when people do shit incorrectly and then they fail, then they'll opt out of it in general. Like, if someone just starts to diet in a way that there's not fully structured, they're not losing the weight, 
They'll just believe that genetically they're fat and they can't lose weight, but that is not the truth. They're just doing it wrong. So now they're opt out of even their dreams to begin with because they just got improper knowledge. The whole thing with everything is there's a very simple blueprint to success in every fucking thing we're doing, but most people can't apply the blueprint. So I'll supply people a simple blueprint, how to build their, their brand online, and now they just have to apply it. But that's why most people can't be successful. But some people they have such a, I'm a brick and mortar business. Why the fuck do I need to build a personal brand? It's attention. I mean, it's just, it's free advertisement. It's attention. Everybody's on social media. They're not fucking watching TV, watching your ad come through. But what if I'm like, hey, Wes, I'm on Facebook. Like, I don't need an Instagram. It's just, the, these are the areas that work. You got to go with what works. If you see someone making X amount of dollars a month and they're doing it this way and you don't try it, you're just a stubborn fuck. It's stupid as shit. But the whole point behind it is we don't have an education issue. We have an application issue. So most of these guys, I could get, give them, tell them exactly what to do. They won't be able to apply it. Why can't they apply it? Lack of personal development. The second we get his fat ass on camera and he's sounding stupid compared to how the fuck I speak and how my shit's headed and how my shit's lined up, he don't even want to do it. His camera skills are off. The angles he aren't using aren't right. His fucking, his whole fucking st strategy is so off that he just wants to opt out because he looks at his, it looks like at his skill level. And the thing is, is people have, they start having imposter syndrome. Who would fucking listen to me? I hate that fucking word. You're, that too, you're a beginner, motherfucker. And you're not imposter syndrome. Document the process. If you're starting from scratch, then people do want to see you starting as a real authentic person. 100%. Yeah. I, I tell people that all the time. They're like, I'm not in the best shape. They're going to grow with you, motherfucker. Right. Now they get to see. You don't want to just be that guy who comes out ripped and fucking laying on his fucking Lambo and shit. They're like, who the fuck is this male model? I'm they'd rather guy. they'd rather really follow you from the start. What made me the most money out of all the tips and shit that I've got from following you is uh, sharing my wins and having my clients share their big wins. If all somebody was to do is follow that play, how, do, how does a, a, a guy follow that play? And, you know, I used to be bad about, you know, getting testimonials from people and going there. But, I mean, that's pretty important. I mean, the whole thing is with my shit, is people saw me get out of prison. I documented all of it. So they saw me get out of prison. They saw me go from my grandma's house to my first loft, to my first condo, to my first Rolls Royce. Now I have two mansions, fucking three Rolls Royces, three Lamborghinis. I make close to three million fucking dollars a month. I don't even fucking, un I, I can't even fathom how I got there. I remember when someone told me, you're gonna make 30 grand a month, one of my guys I work with. And I'm like, whoa, that'd be so fucking crazy because this is fun. I enjoy it. And that was the cornerstone of it. I enjoy it. The problem with most people is they don't share people's testimonials because they feel like that's going to take away from their success. I enjoy watching my guys kill it. I'm one of those people who knows they'll be successful. So I'll never be, I'll never be thrilled that I'm killing it and I'm beating everybody. I won't be thrilled at that because I've always beat everybody and everything. I was a pro snowboarder. I've always... Anything I ever undertook, I'll I, ask you that. What was Wes Watson before he went to prison? I was a pro snowboarder. I was a, I was one of the best drug dealers. Everything I fucking ever it's did. It's a good drug dealer, dude. You're you're fucking you doing you're doing deals in the morning, not at night. I like you're, doing, that. you're doing them all fucking day. The second they call, you're ready to go get the pack or have your drivers go get it. I mean, I, I would actually fucking do everything correct. But I mean, I was always good at everything I did, so I'm not surprised I'm successful at this. Everybody's operating at such a so low level. They really make it easy. So if you want to step into social media, just realize people are so inconsistent. If you're just consistent, you get a blueprint from someone like me, you'll start to uncover an audience to sell to that you didn't know you had. Why would you not tap into every fucking audience possible? Everywhere I go, everyone knows what I do. If you get stuck in the elevator with me and it's just me alone with seven people, all you guys are going to know who the fuck I am. And that's the way I operate. I make sure that I plant seeds every fucking where I go. That's what the internet's about. Planting seeds year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. So in six years of planting 50 seeds a day with people that know your product and service, over that amount of time, it's exponential how much it grew. People believe in compounding inter interest with money, but they don't believe in compounding lead gen. What the fuck is that? That's how stupid most of these entrepreneurs are and most of these coaches are and these people online. They change their offers and services so often that nobody knows what the fuck they sell. I've had the same shit I've been selling since day one. The same core programs. Everybody knows my programs. Whenever I talk to a top person, I'm like, I don't know what you sell. 
They're like, I'm doing a new campaign right now. I'm doing a new push to a new service. I'm like, why don't you just keep your fucking core foundational products that built you? Because most of them aren't really that believing in personal development. And that's what my core products are. Personal fucking development. Because I know if I get you as disciplined as me, if I get you as committed as me, if I get you as fucking crazy as me to believe you're the best at everything because you never missed a workout, never missed a wake up, never missed a meal, you look better than people, you sound better, you act better, then you know you're going to be better. And this is the whole thing that people don't do. They want to get good at they want to they want to understand how they're going to do it and get good at that thing instead of be so good at being them that they fucking murder it in anything they choose. You know, I've got a little bit of an issue when I'm coaching people. I'm always trying to change them. And as a CEO, you're always trying to coach people to grow a big organization. Well, when people don't do personal development as hard as me, I get pissed the fuck off. And, you know, managing this anger and meeting people where they are. What do you do when, when somebody's coming in but not applying it and they start that asshole shit? They, they ask, they don't do. You know, well, what do you have to say to those guys? I crush them. I was on a phone call before I went in the gym. By an hour before this, I yelled at the dude for about 30 fucking minutes because he was so fucking stupid. He was jumping to conclusions about, like, the way the program is. I said, I'm not a program, you fucking stupid bitch. I'm a fucking person. Anything you've seen me fucking do, I can teach you. Why aren't you able to articulate that, you fucking simple piece of shit? And he's just like, what? It's like... Uh, uh, and I'm like, what did you come here for? Remember what you asked me about? Why the fuck can you not ask for that right now? Yeah. Why are you assuming the program is so rigid? I'm a human, you stupid bitch. And the dude's like, uh, I'm like, you guys, you guys want to be talked to like this, right? You must want to. There's no way you're this stupid. And it's just, people really, they, they don't realize that their doubt is crushing everyone around them. I'm going to tell you one side effect of going hard in the paint is you, you agitate the softies, the keyboard workers. Good, fuck them. For real, man. I, I, what do you have to say to the fucking haters? The, I mean, I had a 40-minute video. This guy took all this extra effort, and this dude's just a straight bitch. But what do you have to say to those people that are, like, maybe afraid to put their name out there, they're worried about haters, or how do you deal with the haters? I don't even see them. I, we, in my life, we operate at such a high frequency, we elevate way above any hate. Like, I can't even feel it. If I'm fucking vibrating with hate, then I'm in a low frequency state that there, there's a frequency chart and it goes guilt, shame, uh, desire, anger, you know, and then it goes into acceptance, love, gratitude, enlightenment. If you're in a stage of love and acceptance and enlightenment, which I operate from because I murder it in life and I love my fucking self first and foremost, I don't even vibrate with hate. I don't even do that. Like people think I may have that in me because I get angry. I love my anger. And if you love your anger, then it's a high frequency state. I love okay. it. I love my anger. Hey, my shit checked off. I love my fucking anger. So can I see people who don't show anger as the biggest, fakest pussies alive. Ray Lewis. You mean, if you don't have a dark side, I do not trust you. And that's the thing. You do have a dark side. It's just probably so dark and sickening you don't show it to anybody. And that's the fucking point behind all this. As I show every side of me online, I've cried online. I fucking freaked the fuck out online. I show when I'm happy. I show every side of me. Most people come on and they make content. They're like, okay, here's your fucking content piece for today. It's like, shut the fuck up and just fucking tell us some shit, you stupid fucking bitch. What is this, scripted? Like, I'll never do that shit. If I'm pissed, I'm going to show you I'm pissed. Most people won't show that. Why? Because they're afraid you're going to fucking... Be judgmental to do there. Good judge me, bitch. What are you going to judge me for? Judge me for this. I was in prison five and a half years ago, and now I'm fucking off your dreams and goals. How about you judge me for that, motherfucker? For real, man. And like a contractor, like my friend Kyle that's in both of our programs, he's growing this coaching business. Now he's recruiting people into his other business. You know, how, how is it that in this world that we live in that everyone should be a coach? I mean, the best thing that ever happened to me was to get tips that pushed me forward. And at the price point we give them, for me to help you build your personal brand, it's 3,000 a month to 20,000 a year. The amount you're gonna get from that is so far, so far surpasses your investment. There is no business on this planet that you can start 
and be profitable like a coaching business for 20000 a year. It's not even possible. The shit I'm going to fucking tell and show you is going to change your life more than anything. Any other fucking business. And the whole thing is, is like being able to coach people, becoming the man you seek, that is, that's Maslow's law of growth needs. The top people know that the goal in life is to become self-actualized and then transcend self. Once you become self-actualized, the best version of yourself, you have to transcend self. Transcending self means becoming the teacher. If you don't ever become the teacher, then you'll be so aware, you'll be so knowledgeable, you'll be so good at life, that it'll actually erode you because you'll only look at people in a pessimistic view. You'll be like, look at this fucking idiot, this stupid fuck. You'll never take accountability for those around you and say, I'm supposed to teach this man. Mm -hmm. If you become the teacher, you may say, oh, this fool's stupid as shit, but you're like, I'm gonna help him. If you don't know your role, you'll actually fucking destroy yourself from the inside because you're too actualized. They're too, they're too new, too green at the start of their journey. Where you're at will agitate you and should enough to desire to help them. Now, let's go back, change the subject to gangland because that's always a gangland. Gangland is always fun. Let's, I, I'm one of these guys that's really into the fights. So uh, what's what was the craziest fucking gangland war you were a part of? Oh, I mean, there's like a riot. And uh, so in California prison, they, they middleman you. Mm -hmm. And they middleman a bunch of Cali inmates, and they send them to like a corrections facility in Oklahoma. So now people think these correction facilities in Oklahoma are somewhere less dangerous, but it's just Cali inmates. So it's just Cali inmates in Oklahoma. So it's more dangerous because... The, in, the, the officers in Oklahoma are fucking Walmart fucking security guards, basically, watching a bunch of sophisticated gangsters. And on, um, uh, it was like 2011, you can look it up, type in NFCF Oklahoma uh, riot, Sayer, Oklahoma. And like the, um, you know, the National Guard had to break it up, burn down the kitchens. I mean, people are getting just their necks plunged with broom handles, stabbed. I mean, everybody has knives. Motherfucking essays took the cops' keys. The cops locked themselves in the door. Like, they, the cops, the essays were going in other people's cells, grabbing TVs, just doming motherfuckers. It was basically the essays versus the blacks. And, I mean, the essays got the numbers. They were wrecking everybody. They were going in their cells, smoking speed, coming out with fucking just demon eyes, just fucking saw. One of them just sawed this dude's feet off in the day room. They were just stabbing him. I mean, I was just... There's probably 180 attempted murders handed out during that one riot alone. And that was during a time that I caught an in-house A1 SBI, which is a manufactured weapon on an inmate, and I got a shoot term for that. And luckily, there were so many riots handed out, they were, they were going to court for years. Like These were like court cases going over years in Beckham County. And this is, everyone's like, Oh, that's not a fucking Cali joint that's in Oklahoma. It's Cali fucking inmates. It's the same fucking politics under a different roof. And it's worse. They don't get to see their fucking families. We're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Just would set off differently. But I mean, from that to like shit like the Northerners. The Northerners are brutal as fuck in prison. If they catch your people... What's Northern? That's a Northern Hispanic. So people from like the Bay and above. You know, they were all red. Southsiders were all blue. And the Northerners, if they catch their people doing dope, they have, they have to just fucking start gutting them, you know? So they catch one of their dudes doing dope and uh, some shady shit, and they just start stabbing the shit out of them, two of them. And the cops know that the Northerners are this particular race that you had, they have to get stopped. So you have to stab the guy till the cops stop you. You can't just stab him a few times and try to get away with it. So you have to go down. So the cops know that, and they don't give a fuck. They're like, keep going. Jeez. And they're just watching as they're just going. <laughs> like this guy gets stabbed like 800 times probably. And like they're just fucking. The guys are like looking at the cops like, please God, like stop this shit. So after you've seen the, the devil, like how, how do you have a relationship with God and, and have sort of a, uh, an other side of the fence? You're out here doing good. There's a lot of times people go to prison and they have a victim mentality. They're mad at everyone. Because a lot, a lot of you people out here are such fucking pussies. And I mean, you're lucky, but you're such put fucking pussies that you don't realize there is a soul, there is a spirit. We have this energy within us that 
you're just dishonest. You're not really realizing what's within you. And you've been through weak ass shit. You think you're bad. You watch some shows or something. You never see nobody die. Like you never seen someone die in front of you. Mm. And so you don't know, like the person turns into a bag of fucking meat and there's something, their soul, their spirit, their energy leaves their fucking body. There's something that they're done. They went from Lee talking to me to a corpse. If Lee died right here in front of all of us, all these motherfuckers would believe in God or the universe or a spirit or something more than we're just here. Like you guys would believe real quick. If you haven't seen someone turn into a bag of fucking jelly after they fucking die and you're like, what the fuck? That is crazy. Then you just don't know shit yet. And you know what's funny is that a lot of times the contractors will use the trauma as the reason why they can't share, get better, do personal development. Trauma. Like the oh, contractor of, of their of their business failing, of people starting. What the business. fuck is that? Don, I was training this guy and he started his own business and now he's stealing people from me and I'll never do that again. I'm just going to stay in my lane. I'm never going to train anybody. I'm, I'm just going to do what I do and stay small. Trauma. That's what that's they, trauma. That's, that's, I mean, I, I coach them for seven years and they're talking about these feelings of, you know, how that's, that's the problem. A lot of these motherfuckers out here, they're feeling too much. I don't give a fuck. I operate from a system. Okay. I have a system that's aligned with the attainment of my goals. I don't give a fuck how I feel. I operate. The other day I had a Q&A on my Instagram. People kept asking me, hey, do you feel? Do you feel? I'm like, do you fucking guys get it? I don't feel. I operate. I've created systems of operation that are completely aligned with outcomes. And if I operate from this system, I get the outcome. That's why it's ripped rich rare. There is a fucking system to getting jacked. If you're jacked, you're more respected. I respect a jacked motherfucker more than a non-jacked motherfucker. It's just what it is. Once you're honest, you can start to create it. Now, there's a system for social media. I posted on social media for so long, I uncovered a bulletproof system that works for anybody. And the thing is, the only person who won't believe it works for him is a person who doubts himself. The only person who doubts himself is the individual who doesn't put the work in to know their worth. The work instills the worth, so therefore I'm building them as a person first, and then we're building their personal brand. Once they start to shine because what they're doing, people come to them. They don't even have to sell it. People are like, I want that. And the guy'd be like, What? What do you mean? They're like, that. And you're like, What do you mean? I want to be like you. I want the discipline you have. I want the confidence you have. I want that. I know that's the secret sauce. And all these fucking idiots out here really believe it's something else. I'll be, I'll be on a call with someone. I'm like, do you not believe that you're a fucking small little weasel fuck who his son doesn't look up to? I will smack you so fucking hard, you'll hit the ground harder than I fucking hit you. Like, that should not be the case for you, motherfucker. I'm a small weasel fuck that will knock you. You should, you should be a bad motherfucker. Who, who didn't look up to a man who's a bad motherfucker? So in what day and age is it real that... Men are okay to be all soft with their pussy ass. Energy. Do you think your fucking bitch wants that? So listen, at our event, we're doing something different. Like on the first day, we're breaking down. We're doing a seminar. And guys, uh, jujitsu is an art where it's called the gentle art, but you're in a snuggle struggle to the death. You know, someone's trying to choke you out. It's trying to break your arm. And the reality is, is a lot of people say they want to do it, but don't. And have you ever tried jujitsu? I don't even want to fight anyone because I have problems losing. Like, I, I just don't want to lose. I, I fucking have issues. So Me too. I had a problem losing. I don't like, I don't, I don't like fighting. I, I, don't, I don't want to fight no more. I've been fighting my whole life. Like, I actually went to prison for violently hurting someone. A lot of people think that they're that bad motherfucker, but they don't. They've never hurt anyone, really. They've never really brutalized a lot of people. And, I mean, I have that in me. I don't like to agitate that side of me. But the thing is, is, like... A lot of you men don't realize you're, you're, you're siding with what you already are instead of creating more of what you aren't. A lot of these fucking men out here need to be more like me and they need to stop glorifying these, this compassion, this softer shit. People like me need that. Well, for me, like I needed to check that off the box. Like I got in some stupid fights in high school and stuff, but you know, I didn't know if I was in a room and there was knives, if I would fight to the death and going into the cage and fighting helped me check that off the box like dude I know i've told guys in my program who haven't been in fights 
who are nice guys, who are great people that are soft, maybe you should go fucking pick up a martial art or something. Like, you need to know what you're fucking capable of. Because I know if it gets down to it, I'm going to fucking smash a motherfucker or die trying. Like, people are always like, do people test you? I'm like, I've never been tested out here. Like, since I've been out of prison, no one's ever actually done anything. They talk. You should try jujitsu with me. Yeah, I just don't. There's no point. I mean, I, I'd rather make money than fucking learn a new thing. I don't I don't even fucking care to learn new Well, the hard shit. part about jujitsu is everyone has to suck. And for yeah. me, it, I, I was pretty good at boxing. I had hands, but. You My whole thing is, I, I don't even want to. kind of suck. I don't even want to fight. And if someone does whoop my ass, I'm just going to come back and smoke them anyways. So it doesn't even matter. So I just don't even, I, there's no point. I don't even, I've been in so many fights. I've been, it makes me sick to watch even like UFC or fighting or anything like that. Because I get so turned up, I want to fight. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 calm the fuck down. Like, I don't like it. I don't like that feeling in, in me because it brings out a bad side of me. But people have to know they have that bad side. You have to be able to be that bad motherfucker. If me and Lee are walking out here and someone starts a fucking problem, I'm probably going to dome the dude first. You know, like, I just, I'm not going to let it get to the point where it escalates too much. I most likely, because my criminal record, would, like, make the guy fucking make the advance first and have everybody see it so he had some fucking proof and I will get life in prison. But, I mean, the old me, I'd have been like, Oh, no, no, it's all good. Like, we don't want no problems. Bah! We call, we call that a dope fiend where I'm from. A dope fiend. Well, what do they, dope, call, what yeah, do they call it? Dope, dope fiend in them, you know? That's, that's just, that's what a dope fiend does. They fucking, you get in your pocket, you're good, and they just knock you out or something, you know? But that's, I, I just honestly, I know people need both sides. Mm -hmm. Like the Peterson quote, people are fucking glorifying this softer side when everybody's too fucking comfortable and soft to begin with. It's fucking sickening. That's it's not a man. On toxic masculinity. Oh, I don't even know. It's, there's no what such is thing as toxic masculinity. There's no such thing as that. That doesn't even exist. That's what pussies say when they are fucking feel uncomfortable because a man walks in. The problem is I haven't been... The problem is in every room I've been in for the longest time, not enough masculineness walked into where I felt threatened. I want to feel threatened. When you walk in a prison chow hall... There is, it is so toxic, you will feel threatened to where you have to be strong. And that's what's not happening in society. You walk in a room and you're like, what the fuck is up with these pussies? These guys are prancing on their tiptoes around, acting like they're super grateful, and they're passive aggressive talking shit the second you leave. That everyone's passive aggressive till a real mother motherfucking aggressive motherfucker walks in. Then they're like, oh, that's toxic. It's like, no, that's a dude who will kick your fucking teeth in. But I mean, my whole point is you go into like a prison chow hall, like, dude, these motherfuckers, this is crazy energy. These dudes will kill your ass. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it's like outside. That's not what it's like in America. It needs more of that. You need to be the, when a man is disciplined and dangerous, it keeps everybody else in check. And too much kindness breeds a lack of accountability. Nobody's that accountable because everybody's too kind to each other. Nobody's like really threatening. The biggest people. fucking nugget right there. Because in business, even my best friends, guys that are in my inner circle, it's the hard conversations that make us the most money. And sometimes I act like a bitch and kick the can and don't tell them what I think. I fucking tell everyone what I think right away. And I've been like, honestly, in this, like, you know, had a conversation with one of my guys. Like, dude, if you don't get your shit in shape, you're just going to keep being this sailboat without a rudder, and it almost feels like I'm fat shaming people. What do you and, uh, Fuck that. It doesn't matter. I mean, you should be shameful if you're fat. Yeah? Yeah. You just destroyed your fucking body. You're pulling up like that. Your people, this is you showing respect to your people, showing up with that low energy, that shape, that shit. You're just destroying your body for some selfish fucking snacks and showing up looking horrendous. Now, uh, fuck that. Fuck that. Uh, it, it's dishonest as fuck to the core to say it's okay to show up and disrespect your people with that shit. What those people are like, no, oh, just love me. It's like, well, you don't love you. Look how you treat you. So you don't love you. You don't treat yourself right. And you want fucking other people to love you and treat you right? Look, guys, um, you know, I've had three of my clients die from drug overdose. My uncle, he died from suicide. We shouldn't even have to explain all that to people. It should, we shouldn't have to be like, hey, it's bad for your health. They fucking know it. They, do you know how bad it is for your mental health to walk around it with tits as a man? You're just walking around like, God, I don't want to have to take my shirt off. What if you walked around jacked as fuck? They're like, I hope these bitches tell me to take my shirt off. I'm peeling that motherfucker off right now. Like, how is that not horrible for your mental health 
to be the man who's scared to take his shirt off. And if you're scared to take your shirt off, but you're doing okay in business, what happens when you get in shape? Now you're just going to go through the roof. It was a big accelerator for me. Um, well, talk about working out for mental health, like not just the way you look, but anything. I else. show up every day to the gym. I don't look better year to year. I don't look better. What am I going to get? Like an extra striation in my tricep. I'm not trying to get crazy bigger. I work out every day to feel better. I know that my process is a form of extraction. My, full, my process is a form of removal. I have all these negative traits in me. So does everybody in this fucking room. Mine are more negative outward. There's two types of people. The people who are negative outward towards people and the people who are negative inward. Most people are just negative to themselves. That's not me. I'm not negative to myself. I view myself very highly. But if I don't remove all my negativity, my fucking, all the thoughts I have, the anger I have, all this shit, it's outwardly projected onto people. So I'm like, look at this fucking pussy. I'm like, oh, you're, and even like the people around me, I'll just, I'll, I'll shark on them so fucking hard that they'll either level up or be broken. And so the thing is, I have to, I have to extinguish all that negativity in me each morning to get rid of that person to where I can be at a more, like a more even keel, like a level playing. Yeah, yeah it's, acceptable. It's, you know, just, just more fucking tolerable motherfucker. Cause I'm way fucking turned. People always ask me, Wes, why do you get up at 245? Like, what the fuck is that? Why the fuck do you go to the, why do you work out at four in the morning? It's the same, same workout at four in the morning, it's four in the afternoon. I'm, I'm like, it's a removal process. I have to get rid. It's not what I get from my workout and my program. It's what I get rid of. Like, I, I wake up fucking turnt. I wake up pissed. I wake up so fucking angry where I'm at. And most of you fucks would wake up and be like, yay. I have an SVJ and millions and millions of dollars and I can do whatever I want today. You would, motherfucker. You would go eat some shit you want. You would go parade around like you're fucking cool because you got all this shit. I wake up fucking pissed. Even though I have millions and millions of liquid fucking... I'm dude, I'm, I'm in a position most people could ever fucking you dream in. pissed off for greatness? I am fucking pissed at where I'm at every morning. Every morning. Every fucking morning I wake up, this is fucking bullshit i'm i'm the definition of what fucking people understand about throwing the bar away i'll raise the bar so everyone see me raise the bar so high every fucking year after year month after month week after week and i fucking could give a fuck about that bar you know one of the things that you're doing incredibly is you're 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 selling so much uh through social you're selling through a lot of different methods you have really you know, uh, incredible. The first time we had an interaction, I, I tagged you in a post and then you hit me with a DM. Yeah. And then I'll tell And I really did it. And you really did it. Because I'm really pissed off at where I'm at. Mm -hmm. That's your guys' fucking problem. You're not pissed enough at where you're at. You're comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, and you make excuses. Like, oh, I make I have time to send these people DMs. I make more than my other friends. Like, I'm in a good spot. Uh, my wife doesn't need that new car. Or uh, why the fuck does she need that? Like, Motherfucker, like, dude, I just can't even fathom how people don't understand their worth, but I get it. They haven't put in as much work as me. I've put in so much work on me. I need 30 Rolls Royces. So you, I need three fucking planes. You got a, I need way more. You got a bunch of guys, and I'll say a lot of them are not going to be on your energy level, on your fitness level. They may have made some money, but they're going to be sitting there in a room September 1st through 3rd looking for transformation. What does Wes Watson do? to change their lives and make them transform in that, in that hour that you have with them at the Blue Collar Conference? I create, I create the who. They, they're thinking how they're going to do it. I turn them into the person that knows they're it. I make them become someone different. Life ain't about appearing and acquiring. I have everything. I'm still pissed. The only way I'm not pissed is if I do every fucking action that's aligned with my next level. If I do every action aligned with my next level, I'll always get the next level. I'm glad I wake up angry till I do everything that's aligned with my next level. As soon as I do everything aligned with that level, I'm not angry no more. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got it all done. Now I can fucking, now I can just kick back and relax a bit. I don't fully ever fucking relax, relax. But people are like, oh, that must be horrible. No, your position must be horrible. You're fucking, you're stressed out about money 24 seven. Like your people look at you like you're a fucking bum. You have to tell your kid you can't get that bike. You have to tell your wife you can't have that house. You can't have that car. You can't do this. 
you have to turn everything down for your people. Like, you, your kid's looking at me driving by in the Lambo, and he's like, God damn, Dad, look at that. And you're just like, ah, I, we're not really on that level, son. Why the fuck not? Why the fuck aren't you? Like, if one motherfucker did it, why the fuck can't you? That's what I do for them. I show them that they're the motherfucker who deserves it, and the only way they'll be deserving of it is the daily work they put in. I put in fucking relentless work for 16 years on me. I look around, I'm like, I'm better than everyone. I'm better than all you motherfuckers. And the only thing, the, the, the three traits of hyper-successful people, I've said a million times, number one, you think you're fucking better than everyone. Mm -hmm. That's the first trait of a hyper-successful person. Somebody said, Lee, your biggest problem is your ego. Can no, that is... That is the best thing. If your ego is ethical, that's the best fucking thing. You, do you think Michael Jordan went into the game going, I'm going to be fifth today in the game? No. Exactly. He's like, I'm fucking Michael Jordan, bitch. I'm going to fucking manhandle you motherfuckers. Like, do you, do, why the fuck do people not get that shit? It's murder, and I'm taking everything. I'm taking all your shit. I want my guys to think that way. I want them to believe they're better than me. And the only way they'll ever have that is to be around people who operate like that. Because they're around pussies who tell them, hey, you got too big of ego. Everyone around you is breaking you down. Wes Watson builds you. Wes Watson says, Lee, get the fuck on camera and shoot that shit better. The fuck was that? He said, what the fuck are these stories? My stories are the fucking VSL, motherfucker. You're not telling me what you offer. What the fuck? Our first coaching call. Dude, all I fuck I need it. I need Need you to believe in yourself more than anybody's ever believed in anyone. And the only way you'll do that is to never miss again. What if you never missed shit? You didn't miss a wake up. You didn't miss a workout. You didn't miss a meal. You didn't miss a fucking DM. I don't miss a fucking message. I do more than everyone. I'm worth more in my eyes. So that shines in the confidence. If I have you do more, the only reason people feel like they can't do more is they feel like they're burnt out. The only reason they're burnt out is negative self-talk towards the work. I'm going to hit you with one right now. Okay, because my contractors struggle with something I call being a do-a-holic. Yeah. You got... Oh, no, I have a not-to-do list. Okay. I only do... These are the three things right. I do. My, my schedule, mm -hmm. I, I do my calendar, my content, my sales. That's the only things I'll do. Everything else, I will not touch it. There, there will, I will not pick something up off my floor. I would, dude, I don't do anything else. Nothing else. I don't order groceries. I don't do anything but content calendar which this is on my calendar and my sales so only three things i do nothing else the idea is though andrew leveraged the army and he had the affiliates and he empowered a whole group of folks so he's selling even while he's in jail you know like there is a concept that if you keep giving it away and train salespeople, oh, why not a sales team i just i really don't believe in in coaching that it's it's that's the way you should do it like i i want to talk to wes you know? yeah like I, I want to, I don't want Tony Robbins to have fucking Joel fucking hit me up and that I'm getting coached by Joel now. I don't want that. That's just not what I like. And I need co. I need to coach people. Who's your coach? I mean, I have plenty of people I work with, but I mean, they're just mentors of mine. Like basically Andy, Bedros, Andy, Eric, the people I look up to. Cool. We all just coach each other with life, you know. Like but I mean, the whole point is, is I work with the top people, so it's. The top people on my elite program, we're coaching each other. Like, we are now. Like I don't know Bedros as well. He said, you said you started with him. What's the big lesson that you've got from Bedros? At first, they pay you for what you know. Then they pay you for who you are. Ooh, I've had first conversation they, with one of my top guys. I said, at this level, buddy, it's get you have to change who you are. Yeah, at first, they pay you for what you know. Then they pay you for who you are. Like, that's the whole thing. They should shut the fuck up realize who I am and where I'm at and just listen because if you're at, if you're going after what I know then you think it's fallible and you're gonna try to poke holes in it you're gonna be an askaholic like these asshole like these motherfuckers and that's the problem what if it was so easy but you were in your way believing it was complicated because that was the scapegoat that people use that it must be complicated because I haven't figured out no you're over complicating it that's why you haven't figured it out I make it so simple. How the fuck do you make that much a month? What do you mean? Do the math. My programs sell for 20K. I have compounding leads over the last six, six years for these programs. I only have to sell 70, 80,000 of programs a day to make two and a half million. What the fuck's hard about that? With three, 400 leads coming in, I can't sell. 
a few twenty thousand dollar programs. Let me tell you, it's making my team, my effort, I, I, the humbling. I mean, this guy's out producing us, and I'm like, what the fuck? Because you have a bunch of there's a bunch of low level people trying to sell for you. Mm -hmm. Like they're the second they know it's me, it's closed. Yeah, and it's closed at what they can afford. Mm -hmm. And then so I have a program with uh, seventeen thousand people at forty seven bucks a month, mm -hmm. which is like. That never gets sold anywhere. That's like if they don't buy the high ticket, they don't buy the mid ticket, that email market somewhere, we have some for 47 for you to start with. Right. It's not going to give you what top one is, so don't fucking think that. And then we have the mid-level, where I do work with you on a Zoom call once a week, and I do make your training, your nutrition, your habits, and I help you get better as an individual. And then I have the one where once you get better as an individual, I teach you to go get people better. And you make money teaching people what I taught you. So I teach it to you for a year. It changes your life. There's nothing that's done more for you than getting your life in line, getting you in line and crushing it. And then you go teach that to other people and make money. It's the biggest thing in the world. People are trying to sell shit that's not that valuable. Giving someone their wings back, their confidence back, their physique back, their health back, their life back. That's the most valuable shit. I sell the most valuable service in the world. Giving you your fucking life back. Look, guys, we want to help you win the war with yourself. We want to give you your life back. You've got to make the fucking decision right now to draw a line in the sand and join us. September 1st to 3rd, some of y'all got plans to be with, you know, a holiday. But why the fuck aren't your holidays with people like me and Wes? What the fuck's a holiday? Like a holiday. Jesus. Do you take, do you take Labor Day? And I don't give a fuck if it's my birthday, Jesus' birthday. I don't give a fuck whose fucking birthday it is. I don't give a fuck what fucking holiday it is. I do the same shit every day. And people are like, oh, that sounds, uh, that sounds horrible. I'm like, and I look at, I'm like, let's put our lives next to each other. Let's see who's doing it right and who's doing it wrong. Look, dude, I hired you as a coach. My life's got better. I appreciate all the advice. How can these guys follow you and get a hold of you? WesWatson.com for all coaching inquiries. If you go to WesWatson.com and you go to Elite Mindset, you go to the fitness portion or you go to the Elite Business portion, you put your name, your phone number, your email in. You will get a text from me. The first message is going to be automated. Then it, when that automated message comes to you, it messages me and I'm on the fucking thread personally. I'm answering fucking personally and you'll be talking to me. The second you hit that button, watch how quick it is. You go to westwatson.com to fill out for coaching. You go to at Watson underscore fit for my Instagram. Go there. Go there. Just listen to what I tell you. Do what I show you. It'll change your fucking life. There, life's a mirror. It's not a window. Everything that changed my life will change yours. You're just a stubborn motherfucker who hasn't put the work in yet. Dude, I'm a stubborn motherfucker. One of my buddies at jiu-jitsu says, you need to follow this guy. He's kind of crazy. I came onto your page. I'm like, whoa, this is intense. But over time, man, I'm just like, God damn it, I need this guy's help. So I reached out, and I want to say thank you for doing this podcast, dude. Doubled my business. Can't wait to introduce you to the entire Blue Collar Entrepreneur audience. You know, I have a passion for uh, this cons to contractor program. I've helped a lot of people that were reformed out of the penitentiary and give them a great vehicle for change. And so, you know, if you're watching this, you have any type of checkered past, man, you can't miss the opportunity to, this is like the fucking goat of coming out of prison as a businessman and, and doing it online. There's no one else out here. I was talking about this on the way here. Like, who do you talk to that's been in prison at, for 10 years that comes out on your high level. With my, my thing is fuck prison, you know? It don't even matter where I was at. Like, I, when I was in prison, I had more money than these chumps out here. Mm -hmm. Like, I do what I gotta do wherever the fuck I'm at. I'll create systems no matter where I'm at to operate at a high level. And that's what it's about. Like, you'll never rise to your goals. You'll fall to the strength of your system. Most people's daily system is so off, they're so foolish, they have an outcome they're dreaming of, they're not even aligned with the outcome. Like, I align you with the outcome. Then we do the work. We get the outcome. It's that simple. But the whole thing is they're around a bunch of people who lie to them. Like, your friends don't take you out to drink. Your friends don't do all these things. Your friends are the people who are like, we're meeting at the gym. What the fuck? We're going to go do this. What the fuck? Like, your friends are the ones pushing you to be better. And like I, like I always say, love ain't lies. And so if your friends are telling you that the spot you're in is good, and you know that they're fucking bullshitting and you know it's bullshit, like, get around people who are like, what? Like, you don't even have one Rolls Royce? That must fucking suck. Every time I hop in one of my Rolls Royces, I'm like, man, that must suck to pull up in a shit bucket. <laughs> that must suck to not pull up in one Rolls Royce. I, everywhere I pull up, I have the best shit because I'm that. I'm a fucking Rolls Royce. 
I want him to be, him to be, him to be, him to be. Everybody should pull up and feel their greatest. And they're like, oh, it's about the car. No, motherfucker. And say, you deserve all the best shit. And you don't fucking, you don't deny yourself that. Fucking don't deny yourself the opportunity to shake hands with this guy. You better upgrade to a VIP so you can eat lunch with him. Dude, thank you, brother. So good. Made my fucking day. Fucking killer. All right, guys. Like and subscribe. Comment questions for Wes. Awesome. Yeah.